this scientific session was just really exciting. I have to tell you, the complexion of the of the information that was exchanged uh, was um, just just quantumly different than I think what we have seen before. The number of very innovative new breakthroughs and a number of fronts and clinical trials that are being done is, is really is striking. Um, I'm just looking to forward this. Perfect. Uh, we had a um, keynote lecture uh, from uh, um, um, my old boss, Lee. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm glad he's not here. Lee um, Hellman, uh, who gave a very nice talk, uh, just a kind of a very, um, I thought, inspirational talk about uh, uh, genomics and the understanding of uh, how genetic alterations uh, drive the uh, initiation and progression of cancer and, uh, and the great promise that that holds. But it was a very, very thoughtful talk. And then we had uh, Rafit, and I want to also extend my gratitude to Rafit. You know, when I was in high school, I said to mom, you know, I'd like to have a party and invite a few of my friends over. And about 150 people showed up, and I can tell you it did not go well. And, and I kind of felt that you had the same kind of a situation going here because you had to say to the NIH, I would like to have some of my friends over. And, and, and who knew how this was all going to turn out? But thank you very much for hosting us here. Yeah. here. <laughs> thank you. And uh, this is just an example of the kinds of, uh, of um, talks we had. This was Hetty Kindler during the uh, Monday uh, morning session talking about some of the, inter, um, <clears throat> some of the uh, national um, uh, cooperative group trials that are going on. So I'll just start by saying that in the Monday morning session, we had um, presentations from our grantees. And, and this is always very exciting because this is, th these are reports given from the um, people that the MARF has funded. And so uh, this is kind of understanding where our return on investment is. And I've got to tell you, it's just spectacular. It's just spectacular. Uh, we had three very bright young undergrads uh, from the University of Notre Dame who were given uh, James Grogan fellowships to introduce them to the uh, field of research in mesothelioma. Uh, and I think that we've planted some uh, terrific seeds there. They're all very, very excited about their futures in uh, biomedical research. Uh, there were three grants related to uh, um, topics in immunotherapy, two in molecular targets. Uh, and these included both basic science activities as well as clinical trials. Lee or um, um, Rafit, any specific comments about these, uh, these grantees? The, um, I think the quality of the work done by the grantees uh, is really outstanding and uh, really have laid the foundation where many of them will be getting larger grants from Department of Defense or NIH, so they can then, besides pursuing their own independent scientific career, get interested in mesothelioma research, which I think in the long run uh, helps us all. I have to say, for me, uh, the, um, the presentations from the James Grogan Fellows was one of the absolute highlights of the whole meeting. It was just um, so great to see how these three young people, undergraduates in college, were uh, transformed and inspired by their experiences and learned so much about this disease and the community that it, it, it obviously that had a major impact on those people's lives. The uh, next session on uh, Monday morning was actually a um, overview of, uh, of some of the major topics that we'd like to cover in mesothelioma, and this included uh, uh, presentations from Valerie Roosh, Dr. Anish Thomas, uh, and then Drs. Kindler, uh, Fennell, and Brommer on clinical trials. And uh, um, this was very good because, uh, you know, staging is the aspect of mesothelioma that really kind of codifies it so that we can all understand um, in any one individual the extent of the problem in their particular body, which helps us in terms of identifying optimal treatments. And so there's a, been a big effort underway that Valerie Roosh has led in, uh, in trying to come up with a, a credible, reliable um, staging system in mesothelioma. Comments uh, related to any of these presentations? So I'd like to make a comment about uh, the tumor banking uh, for mesothelioma patients. And I see some of my patients here, and many of you participate in what we call as the natural history of mesothelioma where we have the opportunity to look at the patient's tumor from prior surgery or new biopsies, as well as their blood urine. 
and try to collect it every year to understand more about mesothelioma, develop better blood tests, and uh, treatments for patients. So one of the things that came up in the scientific uh, discussions we had yesterday was uh, scientists and physicians who work outside of the NIH, whether they could have access to those samples. And since we work in a federal institution and our research is supported by federal dollars, of course, we'll be very happy to collaborate with outside mesothelioma investigators to uh, specific questions that they may have. So we have to set up a process, but uh, in a sense, we feel that it is a good use of NIH and NCI resources that investigators outside have access to it. Yeah, I would echo that. I, I would say the theme of this part of the meeting was collaboration. And none of these things would be possible at a single center by themselves. So, for example, Rusha's staging project required input from multiple centers around the globe to generate enough patient data, enough patient cases to create this staging system. Likewise, the tumor banking um, and the efforts that we have uh, with the National Mesothelioma Virtual Bank um, that is led by Mike Besich and uh, that's supported by the Meso Foundation. Um, the clinical trials, the, there's uh, clinical trials networks. These are um, large national organizations that run large clinical trials across many different institutions, and that's the way to get large trials done in this disease. So collaboration across all these things is, is critical, and bringing all these people together at a, at a symposium like this is what helps generate that collaboration. Mary? Any comments? I really want to echo Lee about, um, you know, bringing, we really had the giants in the field here. So we had the people who can bring the other people to the table. Um, the sense of collaboration, the sharing of data, the information that, that was just, you know, uh, passed along. I mean, it was the honor of, my, just an absolute honor last night that I actually sat next to Valerie Roosh, who to me has been an amazing role model, um, just a woman I have always admired from afar. And she's very interested now in the foundation, and she has offered to be of assistance to us in any way. And to have that kind of personal interest now in this organization is so important just to move this field forward. So I think we really, we made leaps and bounds with this conference, mm -hmm. thanks to the amazing work of my three chairs. and. I just think that, you know, the world of, uh, of mesothelioma is just, uh, it's just amazing, the, the breakthroughs that we're hearing about, the new strategies that are being discussed, the collaborations. I mean, I, I'm more optimistic today than I've ever been, and I think that we are going to see so many of the patients that are in this room today, we're going to see them five years from now because of the breakthroughs that are happening. And, that's my deepest wish, is to have you with me every year and feeling healthy and doing well. So thank you. Monday afternoon, um, there was um, probably as much brain power in one room that I've, I've ever experienced in my life. This was an incredible tour de force for me. I consider myself a pretty bright guy, but it was hard to keep up with all of the advances that are being made on so many different fronts. And I just wrote them down here. Um, and I wanted to just throw this back to both uh, uh, Rafit and to Lee uh, to talk about some of the very exciting stuff that was going on in these different areas. Uh, there was just incredible, uh, incredibly exciting um, presentations by a number of internationally recognized experts on all these different aspects of pathology, molecular pathology, and biomarkers. I think it was a very exciting session, and we all had to keep focused on the talks. Uh, but I think uh, one of the themes, I would say, was talking about uh, the genetics of mesothelioma and how that interacts with other factors. So we heard a lot about uh, maybe possible mutations in mesothelioma, and people both in the U.S. and outside the U.S. are analyzing the mesothelioma genome. Uh, but uh, it will take us some time because we get so much data, and now we need to focus on how to better understand the data, and uh, so I think that is going to be the work for the next couple of years to pick out important targets from all the genetic information that we have. And we also heard uh, some uh, very exciting data from our folks from Netherlands 
who are using various approaches to target the immune cells within the tumor, uh, as well as work by others so that we have a blood test. We can follow mesothelioma patients or to diagnose uh, patients who have been exposed to asbestos. So I think uh, there's a lot of promise from all these things, and uh, we should pan out into the clinic pretty soon. I just have to say one of my favorite topics to hear about was this um, topic on oncolytic viruses, which I just have to tell you is amazing to me because what, what the research basically has focused on is really just um, modifying viruses that exist in nature that we uh, suffer from uh, common cold or from uh, um, uh, other kinds of maladies and to retrain them to really just selectively infect the tumor. It's an unbelievably, uh, I thought, innovative uh, approach, and, and these are now moving into clinical trials uh, to use natural viruses uh, retrained to attack tumor and destroy them. There was a lot of things on, on many fronts here that was very exciting. That took us well into the, uh, uh, well into the afternoon. And then uh, this morning, we had a session. Let me just flip my page here so that we can. This morning, we had uh, uh, sessions that were uh, largely clinically oriented. Uh, this morning, we had uh, some uh, really great, inspiring lectures from uh, leaders in the field in, under novel therapeutics, uh, emerging new strategies to treat uh, mesothelioma by Dr. Paston, uh, Dr. Abdella, Dr. McCart, and Dr. Zamorin. Uh, points to be made on the morning session uh, with respect to the talks there. I can uh, just make a personal uh, comment. When I was uh, um, a fellow here about 20 years ago, I was looking for a lab to, d uh, to work, and uh, so I interviewed with different people, and I interviewed with Ira. So Ira was a very well-known scientist, so I told him, Ira, I'm thinking of doing some lab research, but uh, I haven't, I've never worked in a lab. So he said, that's a good thing, so you haven't learned any bad habits, so I will teach you good things. <laughs> So uh, he, when I went to interview with him, he said that, well, we discovered this protein, mesothelin, and uh, if you want to work in my lab, maybe this, is, this might be a good project, and maybe one day uh, we could use it uh, for tar developing therapies to treat patients with cancer. Uh, but uh, that was really very early. I worked on it for five, six years. And I would go to every meeting, and people say, what is mesothelin? Mm -hmm. uh, in my wildest dream, I would have never uh, imagined that uh, over the course of uh, two decades, I need to, there will be six, seven, eight different drugs using different approaches targeting it. So I think uh, for me, at a personal level, uh, it has been very rewarding. And uh, I came into mesothelioma field because of mesothelin. I'd never seen a patient with mesothelioma during my fellowship. So I think that uh, that has been very helpful, but we had a lot of uh, you know, very exciting work from Steve, who has trained a generation of uh, physicians and scientists. Of, so that was my recommendation. And I guess I just want to mention, uh, I don't know if Don and Betty are here, but uh, the Bendix family actually funded a grant to Dr. McCart, and I went up to Canada with the, with the Bendix family to meet with her and to personally hear a little bit more about the project and to, you know, a you know to say the facilities and to meet all the other rest uh, members of her team. So, again, the Bendix family that we honored last night, this is the result of some of the research that they've funded. So it shows the, you know, that relationship. <laughs> uh, not only that, but we heard the same thing from... Um, uh, the guy at Chicago, uh, Amato, Sam Amato, who uh, was awarded one of the very first grants from the foundation, 2001, I think he said, and uh, to look at imaging in mesothelioma. And that's pretty much been his career now and has, as he pointed out, has led him to get other funding, um, including uh, NCI funding and, and DOD funding. So makes a difference. Mm -hmm. The um, The... There was a, a strong, very strong session on the use of, uh, of uh, new sophisticated techniques to deliver radiation far more effectively, which I, I was very excited by, the IMRT, the IMPT, and I think that these are going to be really uh, soon to be uh, almost the new standard uh, by which people receive radiation for pleural mesothelioma. So very exciting work going on in that area. So that was our, our, afternoon, our afternoon session. 
And then we, we finished up uh, with uh, uh, two sessions. One was on uh, some uh, molecularly targeted uh, advances that are being made in three areas. The, um, I may have mis, uh, I'm not sure if I misspelled that. The ADI PEG is a, uh, an arginine, right? an arginine derivative that basically tries to starve the tumor to render them particularly sensitive to chemotherapy uh, or radiation. Uh, then uh, Lee spoke about the work that's going on at Memorial uh, using inhibition of these critical pathways within the mesothelioma cells, the PI3 kinase mTOR pathways. And then we had a talk on FAC inhibition, which is a, a protein that is thought to exist exclusively or predominantly in stem cells. And there's this emerging theory that is very strongly supported in mesothelioma research that all cancers are really re re replenished by a small population of stem cells that are there that are kind of like the roots uh, underneath the soil and can, and, can, and can regrow into tumors. And so the strategy now is to refocus on trying to attack the, the underlying root of the cancer, which is the stem cells. In fact, inhibition is one of those strategies. Comments on, on this? Oh, what I would say is that, uh, and I kind of echo what Mary said, we're at a time now where we're seeing so many drugs in development that actually have real promise, that we're seeing re responses, tumor shrinkage, um, and, and very exciting data coming out. And in addition to that, we're also in a time when, when pharma companies seem to be taking interest. And there are a couple of very large trials going on, which are enrolling incredibly well, which is very exciting, and trials that have the potential to get drugs approved in, the, in this disease if they show positive outcomes. So this is a time that we're on the cusp of some potentially um, treatment-changing um, studies, and I, I think that, that Momentum is going to increase even further. I, I think Rafit's work in, in mesothelin directed therapies has been a tremendous impact and has certainly been one of the more exciting areas. Um, the immunotherapy stuff is, is looking very exciting. There's the large tremolumumab trial, which uh, is going to have an interim analysis coming up uh, imminently, and that's a CTLA4 inhibitor, very similar to other drugs that are approved already in melanoma. And there are going to be other immunotherapy drugs showing positive results, I think, very soon. So um, I, uh, I, it's an exciting time, and I think that was palpable amongst the investigators that were attending the symposium this year. No question. Very energizing. So that's basically the, the summation of the scientific session. The, um, any other closing comments or points we would like to make? just say that uh, all uh, the advances in terms of the clinical trials is really possible because of uh, patients participating in clinical trials and we as physicians and caregivers know it's not easy for patients uh, and it is a lot of commitment for patients to come to clinical trials and to go through more tests and also uh, sometimes we do not get the results that we would like and we are always appreciative and we hope that uh, even if uh, in a particular patient the trial does not yield a positive result, we're pretty confident that it helps us and would advance science and benefit patients down the road. So thank you.